Awo Salamtana Tina Yist Aling. Greeting, this is Arasi Adino Stafari. This is Wendam Yada of the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. And we greet one and all in the name of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, this day revealed to us and in us in the person of Kadamawi Haidla Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia. We wanted to um, present a, a commentary to some of the uh, so-called natural disasters that are going on currently. Um, we've just passed through this big, um, some say it was hype, Pat Robinson of that um, Christian uh, broadcasting network. He called this particular, he said it was boring. It did feel like that to a degree, especially if you was not hit by it. And some of the initial news that came through basically showed that um, some areas it was hyped up, and we was even doing a, a recording around that time. And though we heard the wind and the rain and so forth and so on, the wind was something else. But there wasn't too much damage in this area of um, Brooklyn that we uh, operate from from time to time. Um, our main contact link, as you might know, in the County of Kings. However, as the news started to pour in over the days following um, Hurricane Irene, we started to notice both in Jersey and upstate and outlying areas, there was a lot of, um, a, a lot of damage. Some say it was worse than Hugo or other storms that have... Um, passed through previously, not as bad as, of course, as, as Katrina. That was a, Katrina was a watershed moment and a watershed mark. So this, this vlog, and it might get into a teaching on the whiteboard behind us here, but this particular uh, vlog is, is a commentary on this recent hurricane being one of the, quote, signs of the times in connection with what the Word, what the Holy Scriptures actually says, what the Metaf Kedus or the Bible actually states concerning such so-called natural disasters or what Babylon calls this wicked weather. If you notice, they often call this wicked weather. But we, we need to pay attention because um, food prices, you know what I'm saying? And this is all is speaking forth towards the coming out or the exodus is speaking forth and towards um, the repatriation or repatriation speaking forth and towards the Rastafari Aliyah in other words our coming up and coming out it says come out of her my people but in this time of grace we need to work out our salvation this is why we study this is why we need to show ourselves approved. This is why we need to learn the half of the story that we haven't been told before. So we, in the Society of His Imperial Majesty, in the Lineage of Society, and I, Arasi Adinos Tefari, basically are, as the scripture says, miserable servants just doing our, just doing our part, you understand. But there's much more that we want to present in the bigger picture and scheme of things, and, and we pray to our Godfather, the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, to, to protect us, to preserve us, to, to bless us, and to also bless you all, my brothers and sisters, who, who love and enjoy studying and learning and growing in his word and in the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ, and in sharing this gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. So, let us get into this commentary, and we knew that a couple of years ago we had done some some detailed studies on the fact that, and we mentioned this in some of the other videos, I don't know whether this was posted or ones we recall, but we'll mention it again here, where the Almighty says in the last days and times that... Daniel's prophecy also mentions it that he will that that Babylon or this man of sin, this end time. There's a lot of other Christian and pseudo Christian extrapolation and eschatology that's put around it. But it says in the end time that he would destroy 
the the evil doers this this wicked system of things that we know as the times of the gentiles the greco romans we, we call it white supremacy the the european the indo european so called uh hegemony um these times of the gentiles that we that we are still in you know what I'm saying where the bible says the iniquity of the amorites is not yet full even that five that 400 years that 400 year mark has been met in more than one way showing that the scripture prophecy of us being strangers in the land that's not ours for 400 years even though that has been met the board also says that the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full and the Bible clearly tells us that the end of the world and let's let's get to the, the this uh, whiteboard right here first thing let's speak about what time what time is it we need to know and need to be cognizant of what time is it so we'll begin with the sign of the times and put a question mark here now most people speak about the end of the world is the end of the world is and we need to put parentheses here in a question mark what is actually meant by the end of the world and we're going to put the n w o and put a quotation mark around this and underline it right the signs of the times the end of the world and the so-called um nouveau or new world, the new world order. Now, let's make no mistake about it. We're already living currently in this system of things, 2011, this global, so forth and so on system. We're living in a world order. We're already living in a particular world order um, right now. So when they speak of the new world order, it's a very curious thing that most folks are warning people and and, and and there's a lot of hype around this about New World Order, Illuminati, so forth and so on, the Bilderbergers, secret societies, and there's a lot of focus on that, but there needs to be more focus on rightly dividing the word of truth, what we know as the B-I-B-L-E, the Mets of Caduce. There needs to be more focus on that. And there hasn't been the proper amount of focus on really, first of all, what does it mean by the signs of the time? What does it also mean by the end of the world? And what does it really mean by the NWO in context with the scripture? And outside of pseudo-Christianity or the white supremacist or the European so-called interpretation, or should we say misinterpretation of um, Christianity. This is why we remind ones when we say, and our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. And I say in the black Jesus, but our black Lord. He is our black Lord. He is the black Lord. You understand? They say they will not be under black male. Do you, do you think that really only means extortion? Do you really think that only means extortion? So to be under black male to them is extortion. Now, they'll say, well, they're talking about this kind of black male, but have you ever received black male and even so-called black male is it really black male or are they talking about the black male you see a lot of folks are going to take them a little while and some of them might not even wake up from 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 the the the, the spell of woolly lynch they need to be woken from the spell of woolly lynchism but this particular storm storm irene how does this all connect with the signs of the time and the end of the world and the nwo um, Revelation, Revelation explains that there will be storms, you know, or Revelation explains some of the signs, and one of the particular signs is that there would be um, hail, and the hail would be the size of some say golf ball, some say the hail would weigh like a talent, and and various ones have gone through different uh, show and tell of what a talent looks like. And these hailstones, we, we, we'll be seeing all these signs in this current time. In, in the current time that we're in, we're seeing these signs. We mentioned 
at the at the beginning near the beginning of this particular vlog right here because there's a lot that you know we, we're living in a very interesting we live in very interesting times but they mentioned that um food prices have gone up 80 percent globally that the global cost of food and and i'm sure most people like to eat or they recognize the necessity of eating you know what I'm saying? so it's important for us to note that food prices have has gone up have gone up 80 percent globally now maybe in america you can still go to the um the so-called the so-called idol shop uh, you know the idol the idol shop like burger king and mcdonald's and kentucky fried chicken and you can still get your you know finger licking good so to speak, from the so-called food shop, so forth and so on. But we're talking about real food and real food prices because year after year, there's a drought in America. There's, a lot of people know there's a drought in America. These same signs that they would point to Africa and say, you don't want to go to Africa, even though that's where we were taken from, you understand? So in God's scheme of things, that's where we belong. But the lost sheep don't know, don't know themselves. In the scheme of things, um, harvest after harvest has failed. Harvest after harvest has failed in America. Did you know? In other words, we, we, we have even what happened recently in this Hurricane Irene. This is one of the reasons why I want to touch on this right here. That, first of all, one of the signs that we find in Matthew, in Matthew, uh, in Matthew chapter, Matthew, I think it's Matthew 24, Matthew 24, and also in, in the book of Luke speaks about, it speaks about that as it was in the day of Noah, it mentions Noah, right? And remember, Noah was the eighth, right, was the eighth of those from that world. And it's interesting when we understand why does the Bible focus on Noah being the eighth, but Noah was the eighth, and he was saved in what was known as, let's put it right here, Noah's Ark. Now, there's a lot of heathen out there, and sheathen, and a lot of um, incredible people. They're incredible people because they're not very um, credible, who basically state that they don't think that Noah's, that, that the thing about the global flood could have really happened. I mean, just look at what happened in a little storm like um, this recent one, or even in Katrina, they say it was mostly man. It was it wasn't it wasn't so much the storm, but it was the incompetence of man. Well, that's what it's talking about in the times of Noah. You understand? Know As Noah, you understand, know was saved in the ark along with he was the eighth of 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 those who were saved from that old world. So what was happening was there was an old world. Right? There was an old world, and Noah was saved to come into a new world. Now, a lot of ignorant folks give ownership of this new world order to the, to the Antichrist. They've already given, they said, oh, we've got to stop the new world order. That means that they like the old world order. But see, the new world order, according to Scripture, is Christ's order. Let me just show you this right here. Because someone, when we say these things, they like what we're saying, but it sounds like, to them, it sounds like we're making something up. And we're not making anything up. We're just revealing in its proper context exactly what the scripture is saying. Right here, if we go to Revelation chapter 11, and chapter 11, you know, in, in, in Babylon, chapter 11 is considered bankruptcy. So just think about that. Just something to think about. Remember... It says here from verse 13, we're going to go from verse 13 to around verse 15. They talk about the second world. That's been variously interpreted. But what's interesting is we just had an earthquake. We just had an earthquake, one of the first times most people who are alive have witnessed it on the, in the East Coast, such a tremor and an earthquake. And that also, in a sense, that, that, that came out of Virginia. That came out of um, Virginia, right? And remember, Virginia. Just keep that in mind, the virgin daughter of Babylon, Virginia. So we have right here an earthquake, right? Let's put this down here. We have an earthquake. Uh, 
a earthquake, a recent earthquake that they say emanated out of a place called Virginia, right? And at the root of Virginia is virgin. Now, the virgin daughter is the virgin daughter of Babylon. Now, most people kind of recognize that Babylon is not just the U.S., but the, the U.S. can be associated with Babylon, basically. It's not just as a spiritual Babylon. It also connects with Rome, you understand? So we can actually put um, Rome right here, you understand, where we have this spiritual wickedness. Remember, there's two horns. There's two horns. So there's the religious, the political, one can call it the economic. Um, also, the economic connects with more the the political than it does the religious, except among, you know, um, um, prosperity preachers, and then they do that sort of thing. But anyway, verse 13 says of chapter 11 says, At the same hour was there a great earthquake. Now, we're not saying that this earthquake that happened was the great earthquake. Don't, don't um, make any mistake about it. I think we all will know that this great earthquake should this be interpreted and happen in its literal sense. We're not saying this is happening in a literal sense. We're saying it is very interesting, the connection between the earthquake we just recently experienced here on the East Coast, which, which they said was 6.0, 5.8, 5 5.9, 5 and it emanated all the way up here that we felt building shake, you know, those of us who were able to experience others that, you know, have other testimonies, so forth and so on. But they were dismissing and saying the real thing is this storm coming. We want to prepare for the storm. The local leaders like Mayor Doomberg, Bloomberg, Dr. Doom, he was saying we want to prepare for this storm. Now, this storm has hit, and the places that it has hit, it's caused some real devastation to those of us down here in the valley or in the Broke Kings, Brooklyn, and certain other areas, we have been kind of speared from, you know, besides a couple of uh, tree limbs here and there. In this particular storm, doesn't mean that this area will be speared everything, but we have been speared. Then they showed us today um, Vermont. Now, Vermont, wow, they said 260-something roads just swept away, so forth and so on. And the pictures are devastating. But remember we mentioned about the food prices and we talked about this in another video, another economic, some of the economic signs of the time, the, the food shortages that go hand in hand with the fulfillment of the prophecies here in Revelation. So here it says, and the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell. Notice that there was a great earthquake in which part? It says a tenth part. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. That is interesting, that number seven and number 7,000, because there's a remnant, too, that was, that was promised and forecast. Paul speaks about it, and it's connected with Elijah. There's a remnant who did not bow the knee to Baal, or Baal, you understand, who did not bow to Baal. And then it says... Um, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Now, here in this book, it speaks about the God of all the earth, and then it speaks about the God of heaven. Now, for us, there's only one God, but it's interesting that it's pointing out these two, um, the God of heaven on one hand, the God of earth. Ask some of the regular Christians. Isn't, it, it seems very interesting. What is the biblical explanation for that? And see what they say. But anyway, it says, the second woe, verse 14, is past, and the, behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, this is the end of the second, what's called the, the parenthetical passage, and then we now are getting into the trumpet judgments. Here now the trumpet judgments are resuming. The trumpet judgments are resuming. Now, here is the seventh trumpet, and it says in verse 15, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world, the what? The governments, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, of Getachin, of Adonenu, 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 
if you please, and of his and of his Christ, and of his Christ, not this Christ or people say my Jesus, my Christ. No, not your Christ. We're speaking about our Lord, our Black Lord and Savior, and His Christ. This is interesting that it would say this. Some would tell you it's the one and the same, but that that will that can be contradicted by the Scripture. You know, what I'm saying because speaking of the Father, speaking of this this um, divine dual in a sense, the Father and the Son in that oneness that the Shema reminds us of, and it says, and He shall reign forever. And ever now, what is interesting about this right here is that at a certain point, there's great voices in heaven that says that the kingdoms, which are speaking about the governments of this world, it's not speaking about the governments of heaven because there's only one true government of the heavens. You understand by saying that the governments of this world. So we must be very careful when we go into this um, saying we're going to stop the new world order. See, what's happening right now is that the Gentiles, inspired by the seat of Satan and he who sits on that, that, that hot seat, are trying to hijack. You see what I'm saying? That time is already over. The time for so-called white supremacy, the Gentile world, is already over and done. But they're trying to hijack that and sabotage you understand, and sabotage any potential, you understand, other candidates or other qualified representatives of a newer and a truer world order. This is, this is very clear. So just, just be very careful of this because when we say the end of the world, we're not talking about so-called heaven and earth. Shall re there shall be new heavens and new earth or they shall be renewed. But the end of, this, of the world is the end of the seclorum. You understand? And it should not be confounded with the new world order because we are in an old world order already. In fact, let me just show you. you you've already seen this before. You know, you've seen this before uh, uh, probably a dozen times, right? I'm sure you've seen this before. You've seen so-called money, right? Right? So, some, some out there may, may actually um, worship this money. But you've seen money before, right? Well, here in this particular, um, this is a this is a dollar. I'm sure you you're familiar with this dollar, right? And and what it has K on here. Let's get a dollar with B. Let's see if we got any dollar with B to show you something about this dollar with B to show you how important. In case you already don't know it, some of you probably know it already. Oh, hallelujah! We got a dollar with B. You understand? Here's a dollar with a B on it. Right, this is a dollar for B. Each each one has a has a letter on it, right? So you said dollar for B. If you can go in a little close, I don't know if it's gonna be blurred, but if you go in a little close, you see that it says New York, New York, a city so great they had to name it twice. New York, New York, right? Now, once I've done this before, you have we've, we've kind of gone through this almost ad nauseum. You understand? But you see, but still, it's like a lot of ones still don't understand. You understand? Because there's a blindness, you know, there's a monophic kind, you understand? Like over the heart, there's a disease in the heart, they can't get it. But if you see right here, it says Nuvo Ordo Seclorum. You understand? It says Nuvo Ordo Seclorum right down here. Nuvo Ordo Seclorum. You understand? Welcome, welcoming a so-called New World Order. Now, remember, when was the, the, the Roman numbers here? It's talking about 1776. So it's not talking about 2011. It's not talking about 1991, George Bush Sr. talking about a new world order. What they're saying is that they, they recognize that their old world order has been defeated, but yet they are not, you know, they're not, they're not admitting it. Their, their old world order has been defeated. But people are so blind. People are have 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 drunk the of 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 that cup of the harlot for so long, have become so drunk, you understand, that they don't perceive it. They don't know it and they don't and they don't perceive that the old world order is is basically no more. You understand? 
the old world order is is no more. So this is why they speak of a a a new world order. And remember that B on the New York dollar is showing you that that's the capital. New York is the capital of the world. It's the capital of the world. Don't if, if you don't know this, I don't know what what planet you know what planet you're not even from. You understand? But I don't know what planet you think you're on. If you don't know that New York is called the capital of this seclorum. So this is not anything new. They already talked about New World Order since 1776, so it's nothing new. So basically, by them talking about they have to start a New World Order, don't you see the trick right there? They have to start a New World Order, but we already are in a New World Order. We've been in a New World Order since the events of 1776 or even maybe before that time, depends on... Um, which um, information or, or research you, you hold to as being the most accurate and the most authentic. So we're like Noah, where it says, as in the days of Noah. Now let's move forward. While we mention um, 11 and 15, is to show that the New World Order does not belong to them. You understand? does not belong to the ones who are still the rulers of the Old World Order. They're the rulers of the Old World Order, and we're in a time like Noah's time. You see, like Noah's time. Now, an interesting prophecy or word was given to Noah, Noah, which actually relates to the Ankh, as we already went through before. We could go through that again. But the, that symbol of life known as the Ankh, you understand the name Noah, if we go through the Ethiopic etymology, so forth and so on. We've done that already. Um, however, a couple of the prophecies concerning Noah. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple of prophecies concerning um, Noah. I think the other day when we had to rebuke um, one of these ungodly ungodly um, speakers, one of these uh, uh, individuals, um, we had talked about, um, I think we had, we had touched on, um, okay, yeah, yeah, right here. We was, in, we was in Jude. It was in the book of Jude. And in the book of Jude, um, it, where it speaks about, but these e these speak evil of those things which they know not. Um, they speak evil of, of dignities, um, speaking against the king of kings of Ethiopia, speaking evil of dignities. And then it mentions the raven waves of the sea foaming out their own chain, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Um, uh, okay, yeah, but Balaam and, and Korah. But let's go to Matthew, Matthew 24. But, but Judah also is, it has some interesting, has an interesting connection with this. Uh, this storm is a sign. We're not saying it's the only sign. We're saying it's a very significant sign. And after we heard about what happened and what's happening in Vermont, since food production is also done in Vermont as well, that farmers know that they have been losing harvest after harvest after harvest. Now, what does this mean? This means there's going to be higher prices. You understand? And people are losing, people are out of work. A lot of people are desperate right now, and, and the poorest of the poor, the black and the, the, the Hispanic and, and some of the poor white people, you understand, as well, but especially our people. Are, are really, really suffering. So as we put all this together and recognize who we are, there's only really one way, and that is Yah's way, and that is Yah's way. And when he says to, to, to come out of Babylon, he also says to us, and we touched on this in our um, or Tanat, uh, actually the, 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 the Tinbit and the Targum, or the prophecy and the interpretation of Isaiah, Isaiah 24. Let's see if it's in Isaiah 24, or was it 20, 24, where it says about, and, 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 and they will not make uh, uh, haste, those who, those who trust in him will not make haste, but he calls us out, he calls us out there as well. He's calling us out there as well. There's a lot, my brothers and sisters, excuse me for a moment, but um, we've been studying and reasoning 
a whole lot with different ones of y'all and, and doing these videos that, you know, you can see everything, but then what we like to do is to present the, the, the information, but he said that those who trust in him will not make haste in the sense that the coming out does not have to be done in the sense of haste, because he sends ones before, such as ourselves and others, to prepare the people, even before you've been listening, if you're gaining anything from this particular um, this particular proclamation and, and teaching and speaking and reasoning, you understand, then, hallelujah, all thanks be, but there's others that have prepared you even for this. You understand? So this is even a preparation for also that which is to come. You understand? And that which needs to be done. You understand? Because if you're not really convinced that where you're at, you understand, is, is, is destined sooner, most likely, than later. Although we're not going to pronosticate and say, oh, it's 2012. First thing people want to say, oh, this is a sign of 2012. We need to, you understand? But the Almighty said that those who trust in Him, you understand, one who trusts in Him shall not make haste, in a sense, does not have to do it in a chaotic sense. Because our God is not the God of chaos. You see, the God of chaos is the God of Babylon, because Babylon is chaotic. You know what I'm saying? But Babylon does not worship the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? They worship the old Greco-Roman demonism, Lucifer and Satan, in a multiple of disguises. You know what I'm saying? And make a mockery of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by whitewashing his image overtly, as well as perverting you understand the clear and the true interpretation of the word. So when we go here to Matthew 24, it says, um, it says right here, uh, speaks about the abomination, desolation in verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination, desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand that he is put in a parenthesis. A parenthetical. Then it says, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, go to the higher ground. It's basically saying, When you shall see this abomination of desolation, go to the higher, the more spiritual, the higher ground. You understand? But instead, most folks are going to the lower ground, becoming more material and more materialistic and more worldly instead of becoming otherworldly and more spiritual, right? Wrong, but that's what they're doing. That's right, they're doing it, but it's wrong that they're doing that. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. And see, in, in looking at what we've seen and witnessing in this present time and understanding other, other features of this prophetic time, it is very interesting that if you read through this again and, and, and you are able to see what, is, what just has been manifested even by this recent period of earthquake as well as um, Hurricane Irene and the ongoing devastations and circumstances that are not easy and they're not going to have an easy time repairing this damage. And this damage is all eating away at this once erstwhile great nation that was known as America, America. You understand? Um, here it says, let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of, the, out of his house. But in disaster, people trying to, they don't, they don't want to leave their houses because all their belongings, they, they start to value themselves with their material things. And unfortunately, many lose their life in, 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 that, in that way. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Neither let the one who's already in the field go back to get their clothes. And woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Now, there's a word to be said about all this. Cause some, see, we don't want you to think that this is only supposed to be interpreted physically. Like we said, flee to the mountains, and we said go to the higher ground. You understand, those who are in the line of Judah conscious, go to the fleet to the mountains, go to the highest spiritual, the spiritual power, the spiritual nature. You understand, that, that, that God in Christ connection. So do not think that this 
only means physical, but it means that it, it has a multiple spiritual, psychological, and physical. It has a multiple level, a trifold level. You know what I'm saying? Spirit, psychical, and physical relation. So if one's unable to see it that way on those levels, they're not seeing it completely. You know what I'm saying? They're not doing doing um, proper, as we call it, proper hermeneutics or hermeneutics. They might be interpreting it right on a physical level somewhat or interpreting it correctly um, on a psychological level or maybe even a spiritual level, but we, you really have to see it completely in its trifold, in the trifold way, because we as, as, as man, you understand, we was made in the image and after the likeness of the true God. You understand? And the true God is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we have spirit, soul, right, and body. Our spirit, soul, and body is all one. But we have to make that spiritual connection with the source, the true source of our life, both in this world and the world to come, in and through that name of authority, that authorization, which is in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. Now, it says, but pray. In this time it says, but pray. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, in the winter time, neither on the Sabbath day, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. Now, even that storm came in up here on New York on the Sabbath day, and a lot of people record that's when the whole world fell apart. Those people who have been adversely hit by this particular hurricane named Irene, or that they named Irene. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Right? For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, let me just, within the time that we have available, I'm sure most of you all are familiar with this. Let's scroll forward to um, to the marrying and giving in marriage because there's a lot of, there's a lot of areas here that we probably spoke on and we probably can speak on again and maybe some have questions on certain parts but let's get to the main part about the days of Noah. Now, recently you remember there was this religious guy. There was this pastor. And we've caught some of his programs before. I forgot his name right now, but there was this pastor who who, who uh, was speaking about some date. May something or whatever where the end of the world was coming, which was that that was kind of like they said that was way above board. Even though he 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 should know what it says here, verse thirty six. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So only the Father. So Christ is saying that there's certain things. Though he and the Father is one, there are certain things that the Father has kept in his own time and his own authority in his own knowledge. But as the days of Noah or it says Noah Noe Noah were, so shall also the coming, the coming of the Son of Man be, the child of humanity. Now often when we speak about the Son of Man, the child of man we spoke some speak of um, Jesus of Nazareth. In that sense, though it was Jesus of Nazareth that was talking about what well, they say he's talking about his coming again. But what did Christ already teach him? That I and the Father is one. You know, I and the Father is one. So they should really understand, not just look for it as a physical thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Christ coming back in the so-called same so-called body as, 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 as he went on that sort of a level. Because he told them, you're not going to see me no more. So those are things that we all have to understand the relationship to it. But... Here, it's saying that the Son of Man is Lichtaferi in this prophetic dispensation. But interpretation of Son of Man, it, a better interpretation might be the child of humanity, the true human being. And see, a lot of folks are not even, many of the, the pseudo-Christian folks, are not really mature enough to really understand it like that, but it's important 
if you can receive it to understand, yes, the Bible says son of man. By us saying child of humanity or true human being is not changing when you understand what the original language is, whether the Ethiopic, whether the, 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 the Koina Greek, whether the, the Hebrew or the Royal Amharic. You have to understand that this is still a translation that when you're reading it in some of the original languages of, of, of Christ and of the early Christians, you will be able to see those nuances. That doesn't change how one translator may translate it, but it does add clarity that many times in English, in one translation, it gets trapped off to what a certain particular set of translators, no matter how well-meaning they may be or have been, might have been, might have missed it or not been able to communicate perhaps because of the limitation in their quanqua and their particular dialect or particular particular um language. Now that being said, so the coming of the Son of Man, you understand, is we are all one, but it's him, but it's also us who are in him and those of us who carry his name and his glory. So the Son of Man means that there would be a true, a true manifestation of true humanity, of a true human being, of, 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 of man in the original, after the original template, divine template that the Almighty created man. Not men, not mankind, but man in the true sense that God made man, you understand, the true man. So we see and recognize both prophetically and from the manifestation that Kedemawi Haile Selassie is that true man who was born as that son of man, Lich Tefari, you understand, fulfilling our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's words right here. But it, it goes on. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Now, this is interesting. We mentioned this before. I think we did this on the audio. And, and just because the days so, so much is going on, we, didn't, we haven't had time. It's what we've used. This means to kind of communicate directly and hopefully with some documentaries and some teachings. We, we'll still have the other video where we use the different pictures and, and the different um, um, kind of um, the visual or more visual kind of word pictures, we call it the word pictures version. This is more like the live version, the more direct version, because these things need to be communicated live and direct. The other things take a little bit of time, and sometimes when one prophecy or one thing is going on and we respond to one thing, we do the audio, but then to present it up there so that it's more or less engaging, it takes a little bit of time when we work with that word pictures medium. So hallelujah to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we're able in this way to communicate more directly for our brothers and sisters about more timely, right, like, like, like to give a rhema, a right now, in other words, word, instead of take a couple of days or weeks. But we had did a teaching actually um, on this recently where, where we utilize this area of Scripture and we and the Holy Spirit illuminated our consciousness to say that okay, first of all, saying as in the days of Noah, Noah was a transitional from an old world to a new world, right? But it was only Noah and those who were in the ark who survived. Noah, it is said scripturally, was the eighth of those who were in that ark, which is called Noah's ark, right? So they they survived. They were the survivors of the old world. You understand? And they were the ones who inherited the new world, right? So there was an end of the world in the time of Noah. Now, Christ here in Matthew 24, as one of the significant signs of the time, points this out right here where he says, As in the days that were before, for as in the days that were before the flood, it seems like we're hearing nothing but, but, but flood. All around, flood, 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 flood. It's in a flood is everywhere. If you notice, it's not a flood like Noah's flood. So the mockers and the scoffers, they, they can mock and scoff. 
You know what I'm saying? Say, oh, but it's not an old flood like Noah's flood. Like, you know, like they want to tempt God. They want to tempt our Father, the true God, and say, oh, oh, let there be a flood like that so, so then I can know it. You're not going to know it very long. You're not going to be able to communicate what you are already ignorant of. It's, it's obvious that, that the facts are there. Many people have proven that, that, that the flood of Noah is a true thing. And some, some out there tried to verse us. Uh, but they couldn't read. They didn't know how to read. So how can you verse us if you if you came and read? If you're dumb, you understand how can you verse us? Anyway, what we've seen in this word here, speaking about the flood, is that this particular time that we're in right now is interesting. There's more shows on TV. There's more preoccupation, and we we'll have to pick this up in 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 the next part of this. Um, there's more preoccupation on TV with eating, and with drinking, and with marrying and with giving in marriage in this particular time. Remember, they just had the, the, the past thing in New York about this gay marriage thing. You understand? And this, that's what we was actually speaking on when we had went through this reference and the Almighty opened, opened our eye to see that our fulfillment is how many shows are about eating and drinking. These are, th this is all that life is while, while there are people suffering and dying and innocent people losing their life and people who who haven't had the opportunity to hear the gospel. Instead, folks are, you know, there's the shows about, about cooking shows and eating shows. It's on the news show. Part of, part of news stuff is taken up with w w what you can make to eat. You understand? Know While there's people right here in America who might not have, it's the children going to bed hungry. You know what I mean? But no, that's too depressing. That's too sad. Let's talk about how to make an ice cream, uh, a milkshake. You know, you have to ask yourself, really? But this is what the Bible is saying. And marrying and giving in marriage, how much have you heard in the last 10 years about this person married, that person married, so forth and so on? You understand? They said that Kardashian, that Armenian chick, she she and her her, her husband or whatever like that, are, are bound to make millions of dollars off of a millions of dollars marriage. So everything in the news, now we have gay marriage. Now, now so-called gay or so-called gay, but homosexual people, you understand, are part of this whole marriage thing too. There's been, a, a, for the last several years, this argument back and forth between the antagonists and the proponents of this. So it's just another sign. And it's saying that, this is not the first time that human beings on this earth have gone through this cycle. That means that if it happened that way before, therefore, there's nothing new under the sun. So we should not be so foolish as not to learn or try to learn. Well, what happened to that old world? You understand? What actually happened? You understand? If we know there was an old world, you know what I'm saying? We know that for sure. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's talking about a new world. You know, what are the signs of the time? This storm, this last week or so with the storm and the earthquake and some of the aftermath that we're seeing on TV and some of the hush whispers talking about uh, uh, harvest, you know, people, farmers have lost, some farmers have lost their harvest and there's a drought going on. But look at the, look at the Africans. The Africans are suffering. We need to help them. That's another that's another kind of trick right there. The whole Illuminati is making money off of your your charity. That's that's another excellent way that the Illuminati, the same people who are behind this dollar bill, you understand, can make money off of pulling your heartstrings. You understand while while cutting cutting education and 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 social social programs to to the lost sheep, the black and the Latino. Anyway. Stay tuned. More is to come. Y'all willing.